are looking at slang words. Hello everyone who's joining me, thank you for being here so promptly and I'm going to get straight on into it. So, C. So the first slang term that comes to mind is actually the term, it came up in a lesson recently, it's the term C of E. C of E. Now we use this often um, when we're talking about schools. So um, if I go to a particular school that is run um, with a religion, with the Church of England, then I would call it a C of E school. A C of E school. So here the example sentence is, I attended a C of E school. What about you? Okay. The next term is the term can't wait. Can't wait. Sometimes we say can't wait. Um, just on its own. So if I say, I'll see you tomorrow for another live lesson, you might simply respond, can't wait. And that's fine. I would understand that means, I cannot wait. I am so excited. It doesn't mean I'm too busy, I can't wait for you. It means I'm so excited. I wish it was happening right now. I'm so excited. I can't wait. So it means to be excited about something. Okay, so the example sentence is, I literally can't wait to go on holiday. I literally can't wait to go on holiday. <gasps> I'm so excited about my holiday, is what it means. Okay, the next one we have here is chat up. Chat up. And if you haven't seen the video I made with Ali from Papa English, about chat up lines, then please do go and find it because it's really, really fun. I had so much fun making it and I think it's a good video. So go and take a look at that. Now, a chat up line is a way of talking to someone um, to make them interested in you romantically. And the example sentence here is, what happened when that guy tried to chat you up in front of your boyfriend? <gasps> what happened when that guy tried to chat you up in front of your boyfriend? I could imagine the boyfriend was very upset, quite angry, I imagine. Would have come over and said, go away, stop chatting up my girlfriend, who do you think you are? Okay, and the next, um, I was going to say the next chat up line then, the next slang term is the term cheerio. Now cheerios are actually a brand of cereal, if you add an S on here, cheerios, they're little circular cereals that you have for breakfast. But when you say cheerio on its own, it means bye or goodbye. So when you're leaving someone, cheerio, goodbye. <laughs> nice and easy. The next one is the phrase cheers. Cheers, which literally means thanks or thank you. Okay. So you have uh, the example sentence. Oh, you fixed my laptop. Cheers for that. Cheers. So for example, if you all hit my like button right now, I would say to you, cheers for hitting the like button. You guys are awesome. Thank you for hitting the like button. You guys are amazing. Brilliant. Um, hello to my patrons. Hi, just joining in here. Hi, Andreas. Hi, Eric. How are you? Where is your red dress? My red dress is in the laundry basket. It needs washing. Okay, the next um, slang term that we have here is, oh gosh, I've lost my notes. Where are my notes? I've lost them. Let's have a look here. So the next slang term is cheesed off. This is a fun one. To be cheesed off means that you are annoyed. You are annoyed. And the example sentence I've given here is, they have eaten all my cake. All of it. I am really cheesed off. They've eaten my cake. All of it. I'm really cheesed off. Really cheesed off. If you come round here and eat my cake without asking and you finish the whole cake, I would be seriously, seriously cheesed off. But I'm not cheesed off with you guys because you guys are lovely. Um, okay, so the next one we have here is... The phrase Chinese whispers. Now, Chinese whispers refers to 
um, refers to when information is passed verbally from one person to another, but it becomes distorted. So if I tell you, if I tell you about something I did today, I whisper it in your ear, and then you whisper it to the next person, this is what Anna did today. And then that person whispers it to another person. By the time we get to the last person, if you say to that person, what did Anna do today? They may have the wrong information because lots of different people have told the same story and they miss out details or they add details that weren't there originally. So it becomes distorted. And there's actually a game called Chinese Whispers where you sit in a line and one person will start the story and it gets passed on and passed on and passed on and we see if the person at the end has the right story. We'll see if people can remember the information, pass it on, and that is called Chinese whispers. And the example sentence that I've given here is, oh, it's like Chinese whispers in here. Doesn't anyone file reports anymore? And I'm imagining that we're talking about um, an office. It's an office and nobody is writing anything down. People are just telling each other what's happened. Nobody's writing reports, so the information is being distorted. And so the sentence is, oh, it's like Chinese whispers in here. Doesn't anyone file reports anymore? Okay, so the next one is the phrase chin wag. Oh, to have a chin wag. A chin wag is to talk to someone. It's very similar to the word chat. To have a chat, to chin wag. We're having a chin wag. So I might point to two of you in the corner, chatting away, and I might say, those two are happy having a chinwag in the corner. Oh, look at them. They're happy having a chinwag in the corner, chatting away during this lesson. <laughs> okay, the next one is the phrase chuffed. Chuffed. And this means pleased. I'm happy, I'm pleased, I'm chuffed. And the example sentence I've given here is, he passed all of his exams with flying colours. I am so chuffed for him. I am so chuffed for him. And the phrase to pass with flying colours is often used, so try to remember that one. To pass with flying colours. It means that you didn't just pass, pass, there's my northern accent coming out. It means you didn't just pass a little bit, you passed really easily. So maybe you got 100% in the exam. And so you can you passed it, you absolutely smashed it, you nailed it. You passed with flying colours. Yeah. Um, and I am so chuffed for him. I am so happy. I'm so chuffed. Okay, thank you, Stunning Lair, there in the chat room, helping out, answering some of the questions for me. That's really cool. Thank you. And um, thank you for everyone who is here with me now. If you're not a subscriber, please do click that subscribe button and the bell notification button so that you don't miss my future lessons. And if you haven't already, please do show your appreciation by giving this a thumb up, a like. Um, if you have any questions, please hold it to the end. And as soon as I've got through this list, I will hold on and do some questions. Okay, so stick with me. Here we go. The next one is the phrase clear off, clear off. Now what happens is this R joins this word here. So we hear the R in clear off, clear off, clear off. And this basically means to get lost or go away. So if I tell you to go away, you know exactly what I mean, but instead I might say, clear off. And here the example sentence is, oi, you lot, clear off or I'll call your parents. So imagine um, a group of children are bored and they're hanging around in my, in my garden. They shouldn't be in my garden, but they've come and sat down in my garden. They're having a picnic. Maybe they're throwing their rubbish on the lawn. I see them, I bang on the window. Oi, you lot, clear off, or I'll have to call your parents. So you understand that meaning. Okie dokie. So the next one is the phrase cobblers, cobblers. Now the phrase cobblers means, um, it, well, it's similar to the phrase bollocks that we talked about yesterday. 
If you missed yesterday's lesson, do make sure you go back and check it out because we covered a lot of fun words. Um, but it basically means, like bollocks, it means rubbish or it's not true. And the example sentence I've given here is, stock, stock, stop talking cobblers, you, and tell us the real story. So let's imagine you, you're telling, you're exaggerating. You're telling a story about when you went fishing and you say, I was fishing and there was a fish that was this big and it pulled me into the water and I was fighting with this fish and it nearly bit my arm off and I'd say, hey, stop talking cobblers, you. That's absolute cobblers. Tell us the real story. You caught a fish this big. Okay? So, the next phrase is the phrase cock up. <gasps> what? Cock up. To cock up is to make a mistake. Now, the word cock on its own, in some circumstances, depending on the context, cock can be uh, like a swear word. It's like a bad word um, for penis, for a man's genitalia. So um, we wouldn't use it in that respect. Um, or you could call someone a cock, which is not nice, so don't. Um, but when we use it to, uh, in, as a phrasal verb, to cock up, to cock up, then it's absolutely fine. So anyone can say cock up, it's fine. I cocked up, he cocked up, there has been a cock up, there has been a mistake. Someone has made a mistake to cock up. And the example sentence I've given here is, I hate to tell you this, but there has been a cock up with your wedding dress delivery. <gasps> Ba -ba -da -ba. So imagine it's your wedding day and you're sitting in your dressing gown. Your wedding dress was supposed to be delivered this morning because you're getting married this afternoon. And someone comes in and goes, I hate to tell you this, but there has been a cock up with your wedding dress delivery. It's been sent to somewhere in Canada. Oh, and I'd be like, oh, no. <laughs> Not today. I'll have to get married in my pink t-shirt instead. Crazy. Yes, I am crazy. Okay, so the next word, the next slang term is the word codswallop. <laughs> I love this word, codswallop. Now you have to make that S a Z for this to come out easily. Cods, cods, codswallop, codswallop. And it means um, a load. It means a lot. Let me change that. I wrote these notes in a hurry. Can you tell? It means a lot of made up rubbish, lies or stories. So similar to cobblers. Codswallop. So it's a made up story. Um, and the, the example sentence here is, that excuse you just gave me is a load of codswallop. Right. So some of you were late to class today. And I'll say, what is your excuse? You knew I was going to be live at this time. You knew this is what time the lesson was. Why are you late? And you'd make up some story about aliens abducted me and I was chased by a giant dog with three heads. And I, then I was set on fire. And um, after I finished with the fire brigade, then I finally managed to get here. So I'm sorry I'm late. And I'll look at you and say, mm, that excuse is a load of codswallop. So it's rubbish. Com completely made up. Codswallop. Fun word. Okay, so the next one, <laughs> I like this word too, is the word conk. 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 Okay, so a conk um, is either your nose. So you talk about your conk. He, he tapped my conk. <laughs> or it punched me in the conch, or you can talk about it being a bash, something hit you. So the example sentence I've used uses both versions. I've said, she conked her conch on the fence during a fierce game of conkers. She conked her conch on the fence during a fierce game of conkers. So conkers is a game um, using conkers, which are which fall from the conquer tree 
you put string in it, you harden them, and then you hit other people's conkers to break them. And it's all about who's got the strongest conker. Um, in this case, I've said that she conked, she banged, she bashed her nose, she conked her conk on the tree, on the fence, during a fierce game of conkers. Alrighty, so the next one is the phrase corker, corker, corker. And a corker, if something is a corker, it is outstanding. It's fabulous. So I've said, she is a fantastic, ooh, here we go, more typos. She is a fantastic singer, all right. And that last number was a corker. That last number was a corker. Um, number, in this case, when we're talking about singing, a number is a song. So this means that last song she sang was a corker. So she is a fantastic singer, all right. And that last number was a corker. So it was amazing. Okay. So the next phrase is cost, cost a bomb. It cost a bomb. It means it was expensive. So I could say that house must have cost a bomb. That house must have cost a bomb. So let's imagine you visit someone's house, they have a swimming pool, they have a sauna, they have, um, I don't know, six bedrooms, and it's just an incredible house. And so you might turn to your friend and say, that house must have cost a bomb. I bet it was millions of pounds. Millions of pounds. Okay, the next phrase is something we also visited yesterday in yesterday's video when we talked about blimey. And as someone quite rightly pointed out, sometimes we actually say core blimey. It still means the same thing, but in some cases we just say core. And core is an expression for surprise. So if you're surprised by something, then you will say um, core. <laughs> So you'd say something like this, core, you scrub up well, don't you? Core, you scrub up well, don't you? Now, scrub up well means that you, oh no, what's happening? I pressed a button. Ah, no. <laughs> scrub up well means to, if you're messy, if you're quite a messy person, let's say that you're always like looking like this. Hey guys, going to do a lesson. And then you take yourself off. You have a wash, you, um, oh gosh, now I need to sort myself out. You have a wash, you brush your hair, you put on some clean clothes, and you walk out and everyone goes, <gasps> Core! They're surprised. Look at you! You scrub up well, don't you? You look good when you make an effort, don't you? Okay? Then we have the phrase cracking cracking and if something is cracking it is the best it is fantastic it's cracking so i might say that was a cracking day spent with a cracking girl so let's imagine you go on a date with a wonderful girl she's funny she's beautiful you have such a good day with her such a good time you might say that was a cracking day that was a fantastic day with a cr spent with a cracking girl the next phrase is one you might all be familiar with when you've been studying for your English exams is the phrase cram, cram. And this means to study really hard on the run-up to an exam. Now, most people cram because most people don't do enough revision in time for their exams. And then it gets to maybe two or three days before their exam and they realise, oh no, I've got so much to learn. I don't know enough for my exam. So they spend three days awake all night studying really, 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 really hard, trying to get all the information, trying to cram it into their brains. So they cram. And I'm sure we've all been there. I've definitely been there. And the example sentence I've given here is, I don't want to cram in the last few days so I'm going to start revising now. I don't want to cram in the last few days, so I'm going to start revising now. That's a very wise person. They've started revising early in advance because they don't want to cram right now. Okay, so the next phrase is the phrase, is the word crap. 
<gasps> oh no, did she just say crap? Yes, I did. Um, crap in America, I think, is a harsher term. Crap in the UK, it's kind of like a very light swear word. For me, as when I was growing up, my mum would not have allowed me to say the word crap. But I know that um, children nowadays, young, not children, but young people do say crap and their parents don't seem to mind. So it's definitely, um, it's definitely more accepted as a word in the UK. It's not as offensive. And I think in America, it's a little bit more rude to say crap. Um, I'd still be careful. I still, I don't really use crap. Mm, maybe sometimes. But um, crap basically means rubbish rubbish or not so good and the example I've given here is I have had an awful day and honestly I feel like crap I feel like crap okay I feel like rubbish so the next phrase is oh the last one Ooh, we got all the way through it what time are we on we've only been on here for 27 minutes hurrah getting these live lessons into a more compact time. I'm happy about that, good. Um, so the next phrase is the word crikey. <gasps> crikey. And crikey is another exclamation of surprise. Some people use it, some people don't. But if you are surprised by something, you might say core or blimey or core blimey, or you might say crikey. And so I've just seen a huge phone bill and I'll say, the phone bill is 150 pounds. Crikey, I wasn't expecting that. What? So there we have it. There are our um, slang terms. And thank you, Strong Wits, for sending a super chat. You are now entitled to these notes. So feel free to drop me an email and I will send you those notes as a thank you for your generous support. And you have said, can we say or can we add crapper? Well, the crapper, crapper is a noun and the crapper is a slang term for uh, the toilet. So uh, yes, I can add this onto the list. It's not a phrase I ever really use, but I have pe heard people using it. I wouldn't recommend using it. It's quite crass. Um, it's, there's, there's so many other words that you could use. You don't need to use crapper. But